A team of archaeologists is digging into tombs that were first dug up over a hundred years ago. This time, they find something truly amazing, a rare look into the mysterious process of mummification. This find reveals new information about how this mysterious and long-forgotten process worked. Archaeologists in Egypt made a surprising find that could help them figure out how mummification works. Ancient Egypt's influence is still felt today, from the Great Pyramid of Giza to the countless relics that fill museum cabinets worldwide. But no matter how much we know about this great North African civilization, there's always more to learn. After all, we still don't know much about ancient Egyptian culture and traditions. The story of one of the world's oldest and grandest cultures began in the 31st century BC, when the two kingdoms of Upper and Lower Egypt came together. The king who did this, Narmer, also known as Menes, is thought to have been the first pharaoh. Even though the Egyptians didn't use the term pharaoh until almost 2,000 years later, however, the template created by Narmer is now called the Early Dynastic Period. In July 2018, a group of officials and journalists met at Saqqara to hear the results of the new investigation. The Saqqara Se Tombs Project's director, Dr. Ramadan Badri Hussein, said there had been some exciting discoveries. We are standing before a gold mine of information, he said. Buried beneath the ancient necropolis was an amazing discovery. Archaeologists had found a kind of proto-funeral parlor where mummification once took place. The ancient workshop is the first place of its kind to be found. It is thought to be from the St. Persian period between 664 and 404 BC. During this time, the Egyptian Saint Dynasty and the Persian Achaemenid Empire ruled the area. What else do we know about the early funeral parlor? It seems to have been made of limestone and mud bricks and had vats for preparing the bodies. Hussein said that we have oils and measuring cups that are all labeled. From this, we can find out what the oils are and their chemical makeup. The site has also led us to an underground passage almost 100 feet long was found connecting the embalming workshop's courtyard to the burial chambers. Inside the chambers, archaeologists found dozens of mummified bodies and several sarcophagi. One of the caskets appeared to be the final resting place of a woman named Tadahiro. Interestingly, the team also found several figurines related to the afterlife. These figurines were called Stella. Archaeologists found a wooden coffin with elaborate plaster and paint decorations. Inside, they found the mummified remains of a person. The markings on the coffin led experts to believe that the remains were those of a priest who had once worshipped the Egyptian mother goddess Mut and nished her serpentine alter ego. However, the most interesting thing about the mummy was the object that covered its face. Amazingly, the body of a mummified priest was found to be wearing a mask made of gilded silver with late accents of obsidian, calcite, and precious onyx. This is a scarce find, and experts think that the mask was an important part of the journey of the dead. Gilded silver masks had a deep religious meaning. Hussein told Archaeology magazine that Egyptian religious texts say that God's bones are made of silver and their flesh is made of gold. A mummy mask made of silver and gold is a step toward turning the dead person into a god, but it doesn't look like only priests and nobles were buried at this site. There are clear social differences between the mummies and the shafts. Hussein told the people gathered at Saqqara that mummification took place above ground and that some people buried there were in private or shared chambers. For Hussein and his team, the discovery is a great chance to learn more about ancient Egypt. In particular, it gives new insights into how this culture thought about death. The archaeologists' success has also been a good way to get people interested in their work. Show how going back to old sites with new technology can be beneficial. Egypt needs a second round of excavations that focus on the old sites that were looked at in the 1800s, Hussein said. We can use new examination and documentation techniques, and it will be fruitful every time we find new things left behind," he added. In the meantime, experts plan to keep looking at Saqqara. According to Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities head, Dr. Mustafa Wazri, the site could still lead to many more exciting discoveries. In 2011, 
protests against police brutality in Egypt turned into a full-blown revolution. When looters took to the streets, Saqqara's storerooms were broken several times. Other Egyptian archaeological sites, like the cemetery at Dasher and the burial mounds at Lisht, were severely damaged. During the revolution, most of Saqqara's monuments stayed in good shape. But there was still political unrest in the area, and people stopped coming to see the ancient ruins before the French Revolution. Egypt used to get almost 15 million visitors a year, but in 2011, that number dropped to just 9 million. Then, in 2013, President Mohamed Morsi was ousted by a military coup, which gave the international community even more reason to stay away from the country, despite its archaeological treasures. However, as time went on, and the region became more stable, Egyptian officials started to think of ways to bring tourists back to the area. And a new pyramid was one of the first ideas they came up with. The director of the Grand Egyptian Museum, Dr. Tarek Tofik, sees this as a chance to show off the country's treasures again. Egypt always has something new to show the world. He told the crowd at Saqqara that when new pieces of its ancient history are found, we will surprise the world with how we show them. It hasn't been easy to open the world's most ambitious archaeological museum, but some artifacts from the Saqqara dig were supposed to be on display when the first part of the museum opened in 2018. But delays have kept the attraction's doors closed for a long time. It is thought that the Grand Egyptian Museum will stay closed until at least 2020. People also think that the full opening of the new building will happen in 2022. Mark the 100th anniversary of the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. At the same time, excavations have continued at the site of the mummification workshop, where archaeologists plan to open more burial chambers and look inside them. Egypt's tourism industry, on the other hand, seems to be slowly improving. In 2017, 8.3 million people visited the country, a big jump from the previous year when only 5.5 million people went. With innovations like the Grand Egyptian Museum, it is hoped that these numbers will continue to rise. Of course, more people interested in the archaeology of ancient Egypt can only be good for places like Saqqara, as more money flows into the country. But does this mean that Saqqara is getting better? Necropolis still has some secrets to reveal. And since there are still so many mysteries from the past that haven't been solved, it seems likely that there will be a lot of great discoveries in the future. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.